Hello everyone, welcome to a special, uh, I guess one shot. Um, Be sure to hit that record button for great justice! Of course. Anyways, uh, we're gonna get introductions out of the way. Um, I'm gonna be sitting in the DM seat for a couple of things. Uh, most likely those who are watching can see clearly what's going on here. Um, but, uh, Dan, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, Ninja Dan's Funhouse, channel manager and main editor of Final Phantasma. And but today I'll be playing as the new character June Aramaki. All right, and sitting in the recording booth we have uh, Batty, uh, but we'll get to Batty later when it's his turn around. Uh, anyways, I'm Chibi Wisdom. You can find me at Chibi Wisdom over on Twitter. You know exactly where to find me. I do art and all sorts of stuff. I will probably be posting a lot of this stuff, uh, these tokens that you're going to be seeing today uh, on that Twitter. Um, and for the most part, free to use. I don't care what you do with them. Um, as long as you don't claim that they're yours, but that's fine, right? Anyways, uh, I have a narration to, to open up on. Very short narration. Also, uh, before even that, I need to actually preface something. Uh, like I did back in Mystery Dungeon. Um, this is a heavy modified version of 5e um, that takes place within the Gundam uh, Universal Century timeline. Uh, at the current moment, uh, a lot has been done to make sure that this even functions as a game because the UC timeline is actually pretty bare bones when you look at it. Uh, so it's been fleshed out and a lot of things have been made up. Uh, and we're just going to have fun and roll with it. I'm... Canon be damned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't anyway. damage it worse than it already is. Yeah. Anyways. The year is 0095 Universal Century. As the Xeon enemy has come to a close, the sleeves remain an ever-looming threat to the world at large. The influence of the Zabis ever-looming even when they're gone. One man raised in defiance of this influence, prepares to take on the menace. June Aramaki. <laughs> the poster, Fight for Justice, has loomed over your bed for you don't know how long. The posters of your favorite show and of your favorite characters have been laying beside you uh, ever since you can remember being here. And all of these posters are lit up all at once as the light to your room is turned on suddenly. <sighs> oh no. Don't tell me we're having another counseling session. No, Mr. Aramaki, we are not having another counseling session. Oh, good. Hi. How many have we done this week? You see this individual at your door with a clipboard in hand, just not even paying you any mind, just looking at the clipboard. You know this woman to be Dr. Rosa Miller. Uh, in response of many obligations, uh, she is technically uh, your main doctor. Um, but as we get a bit of a sight here, uh, looking over everything, uh, would you like to describe June before we proceed any further? June, at first glance, is... Very, uh, not impressive to see. He's 5'5". Five five. He's a very average build. Uh, and he's got messy, short blue hair. And currently, he's quite tense around this woman. As her... Uh, he can, Even though she's not paying him any mind, he can feel that icy stare. You should be happy, Mr. June. Uh, it seems treatment might be coming to a close soon. Wait, I, I can leave? Potentially, depending on the next upcoming tests. But, 
We have a special occasion prepared for you today. This time with rewards. <laughs> oh, oh, I hope it's in a magazine. Actually, better than a magazine for once. I mean, I mean, the only, the only thing better than that is if uh, you guys actually let me have my own TV. <laughs> We'll look into that. Anyways, please follow me to your physical before testing begins. This routine. Jim will hop up onto his feet. Once you get up and start moving, the camera can show that outside of the area around your bed, the room that you reside in is stark white, very clinical and clean. A large window actually hangs directly behind your bed. Um, the only part of the room that isn't covered in some kind of memorabilia. Um, one can assume from the audience's perspective that this is an observation window. But as you're led out of your room, you come walking down the same stark white halls that you've always come to know for your entire life. Uh, there are several doctors abound, um, many faces that are familiar, but you've never had the pleasantries of conversing with them. Um, don't even know their names. Uh, and you are led over towards a large fitness room uh, that, at least for a good long time, used to be populated but as time has gone on, you are now the sole user of this room. There are a couple of doctors that are already present and waiting for you uh, with the same electrodes and probes that you've become accustomed to. Mm -hmm. More tests. It's just another physical. Oh. Okay. Perhaps I can give you a little bit of a encouragement. One of the rewards on the upcoming tests is Tank Force Five memorabilia. Apparently, there are st episodes. Immediate starry-eyed upon hearing those words, and hops onto the seat very willingly. Without even a, a second thought, uh, the other researchers begin uh, placing the probes and electrodes all over you, um, getting you ready to at least run through standard physical uh, treatments, such as, you know, checking your weight, uh, seeing how uh, fast you can run, uh, stamina, the whole likes. Uh, it's Tank all very... Force five. Tank Force 5. Tank Force 5. It's all very standard. Um, this is something that's been done regularly. Uh, these tests eventually got more and more complicated as you got older. But that's not the issue here now. Um, but after all of that testing is done, um, Miss Rosa Miller uh, comes back, um, all allowing you awareness that they're ready to receive you now uh, in the simulation pod. There, There is a pep in June's step now. He, he is fully motivated. We've got a special simulation for you today, Mr. June. Combat? Yes. Um... We've been working with a company to give you some extra motivation, we'll call it. Um, think of this less like a simulation and more like a fun video game. Oh, it's been so long. It has indeed. Anyways, I'll let you know right away. And she points towards an observation window with, like, a pen. Uh, the good Dr. Ishimuni is currently present today to observe your results. Huh. Huh. 
I should thank him. It's because of him I was able to get all my magazines. That it was. To every, to the audience, but not to you, a man stands behind the window, resolute and stern-faced. He is watching intently, and a second monitor sits right next to him uh, with a long laundry list of bullet points and boxes that have yet to be marked off. <laughs> Dr. Miller chimes in once more. We have a couple of rewards for you, depending on how you do in combat today. And if you... We've decided to completely fall into this game element of sorts and put you on a point basis. The better you do, the more points you'll have. And if you get a perfect score, you get to have all of the rewards instead of just one. <sighs> I'm ready. I'm ready for this. In the name of justice, I won't fail any of you! She winces as soon as you say justice, but shrugs it off. Yes. Justice. Please enter the simulation pod, sir. Right! Getting in and getting strapped up to the sim pod, it simulates... I mean, this has been around for a while. Originally, it was a standard mobile suit cockpit, something that, while you were familiar with, wasn't quite what you were used to. No, the sim pod has been modified now. It is reminiscent, if not identical, to a gun tank uh, simulation um, cockpit. Uh, with the only like key difference now, a large screen that would normally be where a visor would be uh, takes up that space. June currently has his eyes closed, and he's taking actually, uh, he's actually getting a, a, a deep scent inside this cockpit area. <sighs> You hear Miller's voice from the outside of the sim pod. All systems ready? I'm ready to engage the enemy. All right. Preparing simulation. Loading now. You have fun, Mr. June. <laughs> Thank you, boss five. And as the sim loads up, turn the volume down a little, a little loud. You are met with a familiar tune just as soon as it boots up. The earth trembles as a heroic force moves across her. With a resounding boom, the roar of justice is heard. Let's go, Tank Force 5! <laughs> A giant splash screen appears in front of you. It appears this simulation has the Tank Force 5 in it. <gasps> a, brief, a brief synopsis comes down from, from the screen. Uh, almost like the text crawl from, like, Star Wars. Um... You are a brave new cadet, a part of Jesta Squadron, a new ragtag group that has been put together by the Earth Federation to work alongside the Tank Force 5 in defeating the evil alien commander Elgor and his evil-eyed minions. <sighs> I've been waiting for this. 
you get to assist in this simulation both Kenji Kai, Himari Sayo, Korin Hibitsubaya, Kenji Isamu, and Yuta Gogatsu in a brilliant flash of combat alongside just a squadron. Prove yourself worthy of the name Justice. <laughs> there's there's a brief pause in June when he hears the name Ken Shikai. <laughs> My brother Ken, I will not let you down! <laughs> As the text crawl comes to an end, I need to create a new page for combat. One moment. Cosmic Scourge better beware. They haven't faced anything like June Aramaki! As the battle scene begins to open up, uh, a immediate screen is brought before you, June. Um, as you have, in the simulation, acquired a transmission of the mysterious Commander El Gore, who gazes directly into your screen and laughs. <laughs> What's this? New fresh fries to fry? I'll defeat you just like I'll defeat the Tank Force Fry. <laughs> That's where you're wrong! Justice never loses! We'll see about that. <laughs> and then it opens up. Mm -hmm. This is a large, this is a bit of a battle map going on here. Um, <gasps> so many of them. But as the screen opens up, you see that you are amongst uh, just a squadron. Um, a group of individuals uh in very brightly colored mobile suits uh they look odd but not as far as you could be considered they look perfectly normal to me yep uh one directly in front of you kind of appears to be like clasped a hand onto your shoulder uh before kind of coming back and then giving you a thumbs up <laughs> eagerly gives a thumbs up back. <laughs> and then when you cast your gaze over towards the left, you can see in perfect line, the Tank Force 5. <laughs> <sighs> I will... I, I will show them all one at a time, so that way the audience can see how much effort I put into these tokens. <laughs> <laughs> we have Tank Force Red, Ken Shikai. <laughs> Tank Force Blue, Himari Sayo. <laughs> Tank Force Green, Koron Hibitsubaya. Tank Force Black, Kenji Isamu. <laughs> and last but not least, <laughs> Tank Force Orange, Yuta Gogatsu. The make up the Tank Force 5. And before you stands a large array of enemies. Uh, though this is what you see at the current moment, you can see specks in the distance that insinuate that there may be more to come. It seems that the commander is bringing a full frontal assault. <laughs> <laughs> It's obvious how outmatched they are. All right. Time to open up a turn order. So, time to explain mobile suit combat. <laughs> so, standardly like normal combat, everything is, for the most part, exactly the same. Um, with the exception that your mobile suit does not have the same uh, hit points that you share um, and called shots are a thing. 
Um, you can, uh, at any point in time, uh, declare a shot onto a specific limb. Some attacks are specified that you cannot have called shots, uh, but limbs have their own special ACs and HPs outside of the normal uh, mobile suit's HP. So you can just shoot a mobile suit and it would die like normal. Uh, or if you want to target specific limbs, you can shoot at those, um, do a certain amount of damage, and if you meet that damage, then it can hinder or remove any special parts or functions to a mobile suit. So you can shoot at someone at a mobile suit's arm, legs, you can sh even aim towards the pilot specifically if you feel like that. Um, additionally, uh, verticality is a thing. Uh, so mobile suits can go up or down, and but that doesn't have too much of a bearing for combat. It's more of just, you can do that. So, at any point in time, if you want to be above an enemy, you can. This is just so that way you know that it, if you you can't really occupy a space for a mobile suit, unlike in normal D&D combat. You can just kind of float around them, really. <laughs> Does that all make sense? Oh, yeah. Understood. Then I would like you to roll initiative. <laughs> now... For mobile suit combat, the, this combat here, mm -hmm. am I just rolling off of June Sheet, or do I also have a mobile suit? I will be handing you your mobile suit in a second. I knew I was forgetting something today. <laughs> uh, because you have your boy with you. <laughs> you have your, uh, your gun tank. <laughs> I got the RX-75! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me. Let me give that to you. The gun tank in question is a gun tank early type. People can look it up. It is. It looks like uh, a tank with two cannons and a head that pops out of the top and it has just arms it looks like uh some world war ii tech it doesn't look great june aramaki it is your turn <sighs> hmm there must be something wrong with the simulation i mean here we are in space and i just can't i can't seem to move oh well i'm sure they'll fix that next time they do this but in the meantime uh, I don't need to move to be able to do this. Hey, take an aim at this boy right here. Okay. Uh, I am aiming for the evil eye. You're aiming it for the optics. Okay, so that will boost its... Uh, the target AC in this circumstance is... Um, 18. So you need an 18 to hit. Fire! Dang it. You Stick fire, and fire off your cannon shot and it goes wide, just barely scra uh, scraping the head. <sighs> Boy, I gotta get used to this gravity. There we go! Okay. One second. Hey, 29 piercing! Your second shot does not miss its mark, and, well, once you saw this mono eye of evil, there is nothing there afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that one coming, Elgar? The enemy units don't seem particularly phased. <laughs> I 
They're obviously stunned at the sight of true justice! Just a squadron seeing that you're taking the initiative is going to get ready. <laughs> Moving into kind of a, a, a vague formation. Just a squadron is going to belay any attacks at the current moment, but they are ready as if waiting for something. In the meantime, uh, all of Tank Force 5, while maintaining formation, begin moving. <sighs> like true heroes! Uh, with immediately, uh, Ken is going to open up with a volley of attacks. Fairly indicative of your, uh, gun tank as well. All of, uh, Tank Force 5 obviously sporting gun tanks. As is per tradition. <laughs> but of course because the gun tank is perfect. I need to see... Okay. Is that... Yeah, one could argue here. Okay. <laughs> um, we are going to... Do this here. Okay, yeah, that's plenty of damage. Um, this first uh, Gira Oni, um, as all of Tank Force 5 approaches, um, they are swiftly taken out by Ken alone. An entire shot just plowing through this first one and killing it almost instantly. Uh, the the first shot still hitting this one right behind it, taking a lot of damage, not taking it out completely. <sighs> That's how it's done, Ken! Don't worry, we're here for justice! The Oni, now fully aware of Ken and his crew, oddly enough, due to the current formation, this grouping over here decides to ignore the tank force crew and heads straight for you. And they start moving in fast. <laughs> You've gone through these simulations before, but at no point have you ever gone against these enemies that you've seen on TV before. And it's a bit much. <laughs> uh, but as they begin approaching, almost immediately just a squad who, is, who has been holding their action begin to open fire. <laughs> All right! I need to just have the roller always active. <laughs> oh, dang. They are ready. Two of them were ready. <laughs> um, damage, 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 damage. With and with a burst of two, um, this Gira Oni gets lit up by this just a squad member um, as he whips out the rifle and begins firing at the Oni. Uh, there is a large hail of bullets that completely rack the creature. This is the one that is headless, but it still does not seem to care. <laughs> Ah. Uh, this just a member begins opening fire on this Gira Oni, and a whole bunch of 
bullets completely go through this thing. You would be remiss to think that these were anything other than machines. How they keep moving even despite all the damage. <laughs> Yikes. June, what would you like to do? Okay. I have to do something before Justice Squad's taken out. I got it! Uh, he's gonna try to motion for this one closest to him. To mm -hmm. help June's gun tank move <coughs> over here. Okay. Um... I would say, considering how this, this works, yeah, they or, can do that. Or at least, like, right here. They can essentially... Um, knowing what you know from the show, um, it is not out of the question that what Just a Squad member does is they don't just, like, lightly push you. They grab you and hurl you over in that direction. <laughs> oh! <sighs> gotcha! Seeing as how these two are now in a line. Mm -hmm. Now, a reminder yeah. as to how your ability works with the cannon. Any, if you reduce an enemy to zero with your damage, any remaining damage carries over to the next enemy. <laughs> That's the plan. That's why I had to get right here. Ballistic Justice! There's a 16 that will hit. hit. That will hit. All right. 40 piercing! You... What is the range on this? Uh, up to 800 feet, it said. Okay. So, yeah, you blow a line straight through... Uh, the first uh, Gira Oni, uh, which already was pretty badly injured, looks like it's taken a heaping hefting of damage as your round just goes straight through it. No shrapnel or anything, just a hole that goes right through its center. Um, and then the remaining damage uh, going straight into the other Oni. Um, completely destroying it instantly. Both of these Gira Oni are dead. <coughs> <coughs> I'm not done yet! <laughs> okay. This this is passing through this square to reach this one. Barely, but I'll let it I'll let you do that. Be an honorary member yet! 28! I will definitely hit. Uh, 26 damage plowing through this one. The shell of your cannon fires at the Oni. Um, while you were aiming for this one, it sinks itself directly into the chest of the first one, and it sits there for a moment before the whole body swells and explodes in a violent display of pinks and purples. I won't allow any of the scourge to destroy the blue planet Earth. As you're saying that, you can hear just as if it was in your mind a swell of laughter. <laughs> Elgor! And, uh... As the entire Tank Force 5 uh, is ready and willing to fight this menace, you see more Gira Oni appear from behind. <laughs> ah! <laughs> but the Tank Force cr crew appears to be uncaring in this situation. <laughs> and and, and full-on typical, like, cartoon action. Look out, Tank Force 5! Don't worry, we got it! 
You keep easy with your crews. Right. And as you're saying that, a big blast of gun smoke and fire erupts in the area. As far as you are considered, you cannot see the Tank Force 5 at the current moment. Ah. But that is not your current issue. As you can see, in uh, just like you saw on the horizon, more Gira Oni are appearing. <laughs> The Jesta squad keeps into formation and then holds fast, waiting for them to come into range, which they will probably do in kind. Well, that one's doomed. Yeah. This Gira Oni will produce a large heat hawk and cleave down onto the Jesta. <laughs> See how much damage it's gonna do, or if it's gonna even hit. That will not hit, it misses entirely. Completely missing, barely missing at that, but clipping oh. a little edge of the shoulder of the Jesta. <laughs> oh! Oh, that would have been bad. That's a hee-hawk! Unfortunately, the Girazulu has two attacks. <laughs> no! And even though the Jesta moved to the side uh, expertly, the Gira Oni swivels the heat-hawk a little bit and brings it up, completely severing the arm of the Jesta. <laughs> However, the other two Jestas who have been holding their actions until people have come to approach um, will begin to open fire on the one that's attacking their squad member. That will hit. That will not. <laughs> um, let's see some damage, please. They rail into this uh, Gira Oni. Um, it looks like it's on its last leg, but still standing firm. Heat Hawk in hand, defiantly. The eye gazing down, not even at the Jestas, at you. <laughs> All right, then. We gotta deal with these two right here. No one disarms our comrades! And he was not that even trying hit. to make the pun. 36! Okay. So, yeah, uh, this Gira Oni had no chance. Um, it had, like, 4 HP. Um, <laughs> and the second one directly behind it almost as if it's like a chain of explosions erupts directly uh, behind it. Uh, some of the shrapnel actually hitting this Gira Oni, um, creating almost a gnarled visage of spikes all over its side and its front, but it doesn't seem to care. <laughs> well, maybe it'll care about this. And that one directly in front of me, Ah, it's probably going to miss. That will miss. <laughs> you fire off your shell, and as if to taunt you, it doesn't dodge the shell. It would have hit, but it brings down the heat hawk directly in front of the shell and slices it in half, and an explosion bursts from behind it. Ugh. <sighs> This one's no ordinary enemy. This one's a famous commander, it seems. 
And as you say that, you can see a ripple through the simulation, and the Gira Oni before you is now a bright red. Of course! <laughs> it's now the Justice Squad's turn, because they can do things. Um... <laughs> The one that has lost his arm is going to move back slightly to kind of squad up. Uh, it looks like they're kind of coming into a bit of a formation. Uh, but they are going to start opening fire on uh, the Gira Oni that are around them. <laughs> That'll hit. That'll hit. That's a good shot. That bomb hit. Damn it, Steve! I mean, he's got one arm. What do you want him to do? <laughs> uh, damage. Eh. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> this one... So most of the Gira Oni around you are taking pelting fire, um, but it almost seems like they're entirely ignoring this one as if to leave it to you. <laughs> Through the power of justice, you are destined to meet on the battlefield. The and now it is before you. <laughs> but it's there. It's the enemy's turn now. <laughs> yes, it is. And they are going to begin moving. <laughs> this one is... What was their attacks? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, we will just run with... Fine. I keep closing out the dice roller. That will hit. That will not. That will definitely hit. <laughs> this Jesta gets a heat hawk directly into its side uh it doesn't actually seem to do a lot of damage at the current moment um and when it comes back for a second swing the jesta knocks the arm out of the way and gets ready to uppercut the gira oni <laughs> yeah uh this uh one, the one that rolled the 18, however, sinks the Heat Hawk directly into, like, the... Oh, God, what is the... What are, I'm thinking the neck area, um, the clavicle, I guess, is what you would call it, uh, of the Jesta, and begins just pushing it downwards, just trying to let the heat rev into it. <laughs> this one, however is waiting patiently as if seeing if this is even worth its time <laughs> but the one facing you actually you notice that it pulls out a second heat hawk and tosses it to you <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> I, I don't have hands <laughs> doesn't seem to care about that fact <laughs> It's the gesture, you believe. <laughs> so, you want to do this like a man, huh? <laughs> That's funny coming from alien scum like you. June, what would you like to do? <laughs> Is there a way for me to even hold the heat hawk? For the sake of simulation, we'll say yes. <laughs> So, like, the gun barrels in the hand is kind of, like, clamped down? Mm-hmm. All right, fine. What do I roll? Now, you are not proficient with this thing at all. Um, but this Heat Hawk is a plus four 
with a range of five, but it also does 5d6 fire damage. <laughs> it's pretty nasty. <laughs> I see. But you know, here's the fun thing about justice. Mm hmm. Justice can also be tricky. After all, might makes right, you know. I'm gonna pull some. I'm gonna pull some uh, some deceptive tactic bullshit. I'm gonna make it look like I'm gonna swing with the heat hawk, and then let it go and put both uh, gun barrels up at, like one, like left arm up by its face and right arm by uh, to its chest. Okay, <laughs> so. I made it look like I was going to swing with the Heat Hawk, but actually I'm going to use the quadruple auto cannons. Now, I have a question to ask you. Yes. As this battle has gone on, you have seen your squad members and the Tank Force 5 crew go under some intense situations. Has the feeling of justice and honor swelled within you? There is a burning passion going inside of him. Okay. Now, my follow-up question is, do you believe it would be enough to trigger something within you? It's, uh, seeing how my squad's doing, one missing an arm, the other one taking a hit but fighting back, that's how a man does it, man! That's how a man goes! You can feel a swell of energy within you, as if the burning passion of justice and hope and honor has filled you like you are an avatar of its being and I'm going to give all of your attacks uh, for this round advantage um, I see this red oni better prepare because there was a hell of a lot of cannon about to like fire right through this thing Left arm at face, right arm and chest. These quadruple auto cannons are gonna rip right through it. As a 21. That will definitely hit. Hold on, did I calculate right? Uh 4d4 it's, times. It's 44 times two. So it didn't even it, it only did the plus four. So just uh, roll 4d4, and then whatever the number, just remember that it's times two. All right. Uh, four, 12, so 16 damage with the first shot. Okay. Followed by a 23 to hit. Oh my God, that's, that's 28. As you begin to unload these auto cans into this thing, um, you can see the internals begin to light a blaze as if it's finally realized its ability as an Oni. This metal and fire creature. Now, what should have been uh, like long dead and exploded grabs onto your shoulders and the eye looks directly into your screen uh, as if to taunt you. <laughs> oh, this thing made a bad move just getting up closer because with how the auto quadruple auto cannons work, I still have three more shots. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> as firing, 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 June's just going, ah! 15? That will not hit. <laughs> Four. Oh, that ain't gonna hit either. Firing and... into this thing, it you are still hitting it, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. The fire just grows larger and larger, and you can see the mask on this thing, uh, the almost kind of gas mask-looking protrusion, kind of fall away, and you can see what looks to be this mono-eyed skull staring at you with fangs bare. Ah! 18. 
That will hit. Mm -hmm. What? 18. 22. Firing into it some more, finally it releases you. It doesn't seem to have destroyed it, but you have pushed it back considerably. <laughs> So, this is the enemy's true might, huh? <laughs> it's gonna falter in the face of justice! Okay. Just a squad. Let's see if you guys can do anything. <laughs> There's an 18 in there. The one that was fighting back, swinging its arms now, not even using the gun it has available, um, completely whiffs the Gira Oni, um, and it's ready to, now with a shoulder shield, held up and ready to defend itself. The one that has the Heat Hawk buried into it lifts the Heat Hawk up and swings it around, and you can see... It grabs the Giraoni's arm just at the where the the forearm would connect to the rest of the body and rips it off and buries the heat hawk into the chest of the Giraoni. <laughs> uh the other one, um still with one arm, begins to open fire on this Giraoni, but it doesn't seem to do anything. At that remark, June, uh, your your comms light up as you are given a retreat order. <laughs> what would you like to do? It appears that at this current moment, the red Kira Oni, now a uh, light with fire, is just staring at you. But if this guy keeps going, if the enemy keeps coming, no, there's still something I can do. I need to roll 2d10. Understood. Uh, as June's. I hit, uh, Hits down on a button on the console. Ah! Taking seven damage. Okay. Even though it is a simulation, the entire sim pod is warmed and heated to an extreme, um, as if to signify potentially what this danger would be like. <sighs> By so, all means, do what you need to do. <laughs> how many attacks do I get? Uh, you have access to... Choo -choo 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 -choo. Um, so, instead of your... So, your quadruple auto cannons can fire five times. Um, and now you can also do your cannons as well, and if you have dropped no enemies to zero HP, you get an additional recoil cannon attack, but I don't think that's likely. <laughs> now, is there, a, is there a way that June can be propelled forward by this burst of fire? Yes, in fact, I will say, if you are willing to do this, that feeling, that burning passion of justice and might has overwhelmed you at this point. Would it so, be safe to say that your thought process is just on doing the right thing? I gotta protect just the squad. So, would I, am I able to move that? You, may, that you may move as if you were using your core fighter's flight speed. Oh, I see. Ah. Uh, I mainly just needed the 15 to get right here because I wanted to get directly next to the uh, to these two right here. And this guy is completely in range. Yes, of he's me. also 
He also has his the... back turned to you, so I you would have advantage on this attack, probably. Okay. It's time for quadruple auto cannons on these guys. So that's a 20 day <laughs> that sucker. That will hit. That is 24. All right. Doesn't kill him outright, but man, that hurt. <laughs> and a, oh, yeah, that's another hit. That, oh, my God, 26. That will definitely kill. <laughs> All right. There's still one more directly in front of me. As a reminder for the quadruple auto cannons, the damage does not carry over for those, but only for your main cannon. Yeah. I'm guessing that's not going to hit him. Uh, a 13? No. All right. Shot number four. Oh, that'll that hit. Definitely. A 26. With the heat hawk bared into its chest, you fire on it as if almost encouraging that heat hawk to push a little bit further and it explodes. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm going to use uh, since I can't hit this guy because I'd be hitting just the squad. You have so, plenty of movement now. <laughs> oh, that's right, I do have movement. Okay. Ah! All right. Flanking. 24 to hit for flanking. That'll hit. That's Ooh. a 34. Almost max damage. That's 34 barreling into this one. Ripping a hole through this thing. This is practically a massacre. <laughs> And now aiming the two, the, those two long range cannons, the little recoils, over at red. Now I just have to take you out! 29! That's almost a crit! That will hit. Mm -hmm. 24! You fire off another cannon shot at it, and it hits it directly into the arm where otherwise you would have knocked its limb off entirely. It, it blows the armor away, exposing more of this bony, flaming, uh, like, interior. And yelling over for Justice Squad, like, Retreat order was given! Get out! I'm covering you! Ah! 27 to hit. 31 piercing at red that will hit and it blows off more of its armor uh, revealing that this is less of like a mechanical creature and more of just a pure outright demonic monster <laughs> you've seen this in the show and you know that this is one of the tank force five's main rivals that they have never been able to defeat but it looks like you have it cornered <laughs> Get out of here! Just a squadron will do just that. And they will be removed from combat. Um, at this point, while a battle rages on just right next to you, this is a personal matter now. And it's the, it is the Gira Oni's turn. And as if you blinked, it is right in front of you. <laughs> Moving quicker than your eye could even keep track, that burning swelling of passion in your chest erupts once more uh, as the Gira Oni brings down its hand. No heat hawk in sight anymore. It doesn't care. It just wants you dead. <laughs> That is a 12. That is miss! 
it brings down its claw and scratches the exterior of your mobile suit. Um, you can see a licks of flame coming off of you as if even just a graze is enough to do considerable surface level damage. But it has a second attack. Oh, that hits! I'll be 15 damage. I'll be using legendary action eject. Okay. As you slam down that eject button, uh, you are met with uh, the sight of your gun tank exploding. Now you all you are left with essentially is the sight of this Gira Oni and it's red gaze staring at you. And then you see a you lose screen. <laughs> no! Ah! I almost had the demon commander! Ah! <sighs> That's... But even Tank Force 5 couldn't beat him. Now, what you don't see is going all the way back to that large window, that observation window. You can see a certain doctor who has gone over on that second panel and checkmarked every single box on the list. And the very bottom of that list, it, this camera will zoom in and it says the word sacrifice. <laughs> the pod opens up and you are met once more with Dr. Rosa. Um, she doesn't look any different outside of a mild, lighter kind of gaze. <laughs> she used to be probably pleased. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry I failed. <sighs> it is disappointing. We did believe that the point value would assist in encouragement. But you'll be happy to know that today's test was a success. Really? Correct. Wait, that means I get the rewards. Does mean you do get the rewards. Ah! She kind of holds up like a what well, they go out of like a grocery bag and just kind of like just tosses it on the floor in front of you. There you are. Ah! So much. You're free to roam the facility for the meantime. Enjoy your lunch and dinner, but please do not bother me any further. Okay. You have a wonderful day, Mr. Oh. Aramaki. Uh, thank you. You too, Dr. Rosa. She <sighs> walks off. <laughs> looking, looking towards the observation window. I did it! alongside them like I always wanted. Would you like to look through the bag? Oh, very much so. So in the bag are a couple of things. Well, the most notable is a box set that has the first 10 episodes of Tank Force 5. <laughs> Additionally, there is a signed photograph. <laughs> Of Ken Shikai. Ken. And the last thing in that entire uh, bag is a uniform <gasps> of Earth Federation.
officially part of it. I did it. But this means I can fight the real ones. If, if that red commander's out there, I'll get him for sure. And that's where we'll like to end that one shot. <laughs> Very short and sweet. You okay. can you see? <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Say bye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye.